Hello good day viewers, in this tutorial I am only going to guide you through the various steps required in order to find the solution to second order linear non-homogeneous differential equations by the method of undetermined coefficients. So we have the general form here, you can see the general form of second order linear non-homogeneous differential equations. We have A y double prime plus B y prime plus C y equal to G of x where A, B, and C are all constants. So what differentiate this from the homogeneous type in homogeneous differential equation? The G of X is said to be equal to zero, talking about second order linear. So to find the general solution to this problem, we are going to take Y, which is a function of X, equal to Y sub H plus Y sub P. This Y sub H is the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation. This means that we are going to set the whole of this equation to be equal to zero, setting g of x to be equal to zero, solve for the homogeneous type and keep the result aside. Then you come for the particular solution. And particular solution could be obtained based on the nature of g of x. So I'm going to guide you through the various steps required to find y of h and y of p because adding the two is said to be the general solution to the problem. Okay, let me start with y sub h. To find the solution to the homogeneous type, you are going to set the whole of this equation to be equal to zero. We have a y double prime plus b y prime plus c y equal to zero. Next, we are going to transform the equation into an auxiliary equation. A constant, y double prime should be replaced with r to the power of two or r squared plus b instead of y prime we have r to the power of one you can see the power is reducing by one and lastly we have c because r is now to the power of zero which is equal to one equal to zero you can see this equation is now quadratic which we have to solve for the roots therefore the general solution to the homogeneous type depends on the nature of the roots you have three forms of roots real and distinct real and equal and complex solution so suppose after solving this you realize the values of r are real and distinct having two different solutions distinct root if you obtain real and distinct roots the general solution to the homogeneous type will be a constant let's call it c1 multiply by e to the first root multiply by x so let's let that root be r1 plus another constant c2 e to the second root multiplied by x so this is going to be the general solution but sometimes solving this quadratic equation may result to real and equal root having two solutions of the same kind so for real and equal equal roots we have the general solution to be equal to a constant let's call it c1 e to the rx we don't have to write r1 and r2 because all the roots are the same plus c2 but this time around multiply by x e to the rx so for real and equal roots this is the general solution but sometimes solving the quadratic equation may result to a complex solution for instance if the first root is equal to alpha plus beta i and the second one equal to alpha minus beta i the general solution will be different so for complex roots we have the general solution to be equal to e to the alpha x then you multiply by cos of beta x plus sine of beta x so for complex root this is going to be the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation talking about second order linear but let us just assume that this is what we have of 10 because i told you i'm not going to solve any problem I'd rather take you through the various steps so first this is what we have i'm going to keep it aside and go for the particular solution y sub h equal to c1 e to the r1 x plus c2 e to the r2 x so now let me wipe all this and go for the particular solution 
So to find a particular solution, remember I told you that solution depends on the nature of g of x. We want to come up with a function which if you take the second derivative of that function, multiply by a, first derivative of that function, multiply by b, plus the function itself multiplied by c, it will be exactly equal to g of x to the right hand side. And how can we come up with this function? So let me write g of x here and uh, y sub p here. If g of x is any constant apart from 0, like 2, 3, minus 1, minus 10, and so on, if it is a constant, just take y sub p and equate it to be equal to a constant a, o, b, o, any letter, any constant, then in the end you're going to solve for that a. If it is a linear polynomial, linear if g of x is a linear polynomial we are going to replace y sub p with a linear polynomial and the general form you know it is ax plus b if it is quadratic let me add one more quadratic quadratic polynomial uh, we're going to set y sub p to be ax to the power of 2 plus bx plus c. You know, this is the general form of a quadratic function. So, what if the function is an exponential function? Exponential. If it is exponential function like um, exponential ax, where a is constant, you're going to replace y sub p with a constant multiplied by e to the ax. The letter solve for this a. You know we are talking about undetermined coefficients. So these coefficients are said to be undetermined. In the end we have to find them and replace back. So sometimes this function g of s could be a trigonometric function like, let me write it here, trig, trig function like maybe sine ax or cos ax. All of these are said to be trigonometric functions. You are going to replace y sub p with a constant oh, no. multiplied by cos of ax. Then you add another constant b multiplied by uh, sine of ax so if it is trigonometric function like this one you should replace y sub p with this so let's assume what we have as g of x is linear polynomial if it is linear polynomial we are going to consider y sub p with ax plus b so let us use this one as an example to show you how we can find the general solution to the entire equation so if g of x is a linear polynomial, we are going to take y sub p and equate it to be equal to ax plus b. What do we do next? We find the first derivative of this function. You know we are going to differentiate with respect to x. If you differentiate this, x will go leaving a. And this is constant. If you differentiate it, you get 0. You have to find the second derivative as well. You know, second derivative is going to be zero because derivative of constant is zero. So we are going to replace all these three into this general equation. So what we have here is a multiplied by y double prime and y double prime you can see it is zero here plus b multiplied by y prime and y prime is a plus c multiplied by y which is the function ax plus b ax plus b and remember this must be equal to g of x g of x whatever is there but remember we have set it to be a linear polynomial so what do we do next in the end we want to find the values of a and b then we replace them back here 
which is this y sub p and already y sub h is equal to this what we have is said to be the solution so suppose our a we have obtained it to be equal to um, maybe d and our b to be equal to e or f let me call it f so what do we do y sub p will be equal to a is d we have dx plus b is equal to f so the general solution will be equal to y sub h plus y sub p and um, let me write it for you y sub h is this c1 e to the r1 x plus c2 e to the r2 x then you add a particular solution which is dx plus f so this is y and this is said to be the general solution to this second order linear non-homogeneous differential equation and this is all i have for you today subsequently you're going to be dealing with problems under this second order linear non-homogeneous differential equations bye bye